Hey everybody, um, just wanted to show you the progress on my Arduino atomic clock programmed in assembly. Um, wrote, the code, wrote the code from the ground up. So here we go, I'm going to start it off. There we go. So basically I've got this Arduino acting as a simulator providing the pulse um, to this one. I've got two minutes worth of WWVB simulation programmed into this one and after that it just goes to a uh, uh, just a, a 10 millisecond pulse um, I'm sorry 100 millisecond pulse to uh, just to trigger the second so you can see the time is coming up so we're gonna get the last bit of days is gonna go to 365 and then this is also gonna go to minus 2 and this is going to be the year oh, we got the minus flag 365 here's a second we're going to get minus two right there and we got uh, 10 that's going to get the, uh, the nine in there for the 19 and we're also going to see some flags for dst and leap year so the top flag is dst middle flag is um, leap year and the bottom flag will be leap second so I had to do the simulation because um, the uh, receiver wouldn't work with these displays I guess these displays are putting out enough RFI that it interferes with the reception of the signal so um, I'm gonna have to figure that out a little later but I wanted to make sure that this is running and uh, tell you what I had a, about five good bugs in there that I I um, hadn't found until earlier today um, and uh, it was uh, it was a little bit of a challenge but it wasn't too bad I mean the bugs cause logical problems so I just kind of had to reverse engineer the uh, the problems and find the logical cause for the problem so it wasn't too bad but it did take a little bit of time all right so we are about to roll over minutes hours days of the year and the year oh and as you can see the bit flasher is just flashing a question mark because I'm now sending a 100 millisecond pulse so it's not a valid bit so it's flashing a question mark all right so here we go this is all gonna roll over that's gonna show day one and that's gonna go to 20 there we go so in theory, this should go on forever, just counting up like a regular clock. Um, maybe uh, maybe tonight I'll, I'll leave it going overnight and see how it does. But um, the idea here is that it will still keep time to the best of its clock source, um, to, to the best of its ability with its clock source, um, just getting a tick and not necessarily data from WWVB. However, if it gets data from WWVB, then it will um, it will sync right up to that. So let's simulate getting a new signal from WWVB. Let's say it's you know it's off right now. We're going to get a new signal from WWVB. I'm gonna do that by resetting the simulator here. And it's gonna go high for three seconds and then it's gonna start sending pulses. There we go. Now we have some weird invalid stuff right here. That'll clear out in a little bit. There we go, 57. And you'll start, you'll see hours, and you'll start seeing things come up. It's pretty neat seeing it all come up. So you'll see hours, there you go. And you'll start seeing the hundreds and tens of the days. There you go, 361. It's actually three. It's gonna update to 365 here in a few seconds. 
There we go. Now it's going to start working on, I forget what it works on next, but it, it brings it up as a, as a table. But all this, all this time is getting written into registers and then it just continues to count up. There we go, we're on time now. Oh, this is gonna go to 58, I think. Yep, okay, now we're, we're all on time. Everything is up to date. Based on the simulation programmed into here. Anyway, I hope you like it. Um, source is posted on GitHub, link in the description. Please like and subscribe this video. I appreciate your support. Thank you. This is Benjamin signing off.